Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Discounts Daily Technical Analysis and Day Trading episode. Uh, as always, I want to get into a bunch of charts. We had Jerome Powell today and the much anticipated FOMC meeting. The announcements were made, the markets moved, and a lot is on the table moving forward. So let's get into some charts. Here we are in the Lazy Day Trader channel. Now, none of the day trades that I specifically called out today, I would put on the track record. However, we had three amazing trades that if anyone wanted to take them, certainly got paid. And we're going to show you that as well. But first, let's switch over to the daily chart of the SPY, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. So we had a big daily reversal candle on volume and the markets just could not keep above the 20 day and the 100 day moving average or at least get through and stay above the 50 day period moving average and we in fact if you zoom in a little bit here closed below or the argument could be made at the 200 period moving average so not a good day uh, but nonetheless, let's just pull out a little bit further here and let me add my drawings back in to view. Where are we? So this head and shoulders that was invalidated, we're going to get rid of this today because it was invalidated on Thursday last week here and it sliced through this trend line like a knife through butter. If we go to the 10 minute chart, you'll see that. And it just did not care about this trend line. So we're really not going to care about it too much anymore. But like I said yesterday, we had quite a number of resistance points. We had a breakout area. We found resistance at it at one of our short trade levels uh, a few days ago. And then it broke out above and now it just doesn't care. So what we're going to do here, let's go back to the daily chart. Let's remove this trend line. And then let's get the picture. So we closed at or below the 200 daily moving average. Now, where are we again in the grand scheme of things? Well, we're still above this daily slope down sloping trend line. And I know I'm keep I keep hammering on this, but it is true that we are in an uptrend. We are bullish until and unless we get below this trend line start closing candles below and let me get rid of that start closing candles below and confirming the next leg down so overall not a good day for the markets but nothing to make a federal case out of we're gonna have to see what the follow-through is if for example tomorrow we're coming into this area right here i had marked down which is 387.75 down to 385. From an intraday perspective, we should have a day trade there for a long. Um, and even those swing traders who are uh, interested in taking a maybe an options play there. But let's just see what we get tomorrow. Um, overall, across the rest of the markets, let's go into them. Uh, not great either, but. Let's just see. So the NASDAQ, the QQQ was down 1.36%. The S&P was down, what, 1.7%. So some relative strength in the QQQs. IWM, however, which is my favorite market leading indicator, is weak. So it's telling you, look, the banks are still in trouble. The markets are weak. The economy is weak. Be on the lookout. But like I said yesterday in the video, just because IWM is down, in the short term does not mean that we can't see risk off assets and risk off ETFs, whatever, rally for quite some time. As you saw back in, let's go to the monthly chart actually on the QQQ. As you saw all of 2021 on the NASDAQ or the QQQ, the IWM was down significantly all of 2021 uh, comparatively while the NASDAQ was making new highs. However, the IWM started chopping around. And let's go to the monthly chart on the IWM. The monthly chart on the IWM, if you saw this, 
it failed and started to break down. And this was telling you that while these markets were making new all-time highs, that the IWM was signaling weakness. So again, let's pull back a little bit. Let's go back to the daily chart. Uh, this is not a good chart. Ultimately, we are heading lower. If and, and when is obviously the multi-million dollar question for everyone. So let's keep an eye on things. I think that uh, tomorrow and the end of this week are going to be obviously super important. But hear me out for a second. Can we simply just go down and test all this important stuff and resume uptrend? Well, the answer is yes, we certainly can. And in fact, that is what the current trend is telling you it should do. Now, uh, what is the case? The bear case needs to be, well, the, the NASDAQ needs to go down, first close below 296.91, give or take, start chopping and making a bearish pattern, and then heading further from there. Now, hear me out, even if it does start doing that, that's not going to be a good scenario, and likely the SPY is going to be heading lower as well. But we don't know if the Qs start doing that, they could just go down and test their trend line right here, and the S&P 500 could still be above theirs. So again, a lot of stuff to pay attention to here. Um, there's really no clear direction for the market, and I was talking to somebody about this today. We don't, you don't have to do anything. Um, you don't have to be on a side. If the market's not in a clear direction and it's not giving you a clear setup, best place to be is on the sidelines. Now, one chart I wanted to bring up, which is actually just beautiful to me and amazing how much it respects technicals is Bitcoin. So this is the reason, guys, that I love the CME futures chart on Bitcoin. I had posted on Twitter, look, from this gap all the way up to about 32, 31, uh, 100 is a great short zone to start building shorts. Well, look what it did and look at what I've been saying even since um, it gapped above here on Friday the 13th of January. I've been saying, look, it wants this gap. It's going to get that gap, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's next month, whether it's in two years, it's likely going to want that gap. So I said, well, this is still a short opportunity because look, from a technical standpoint, this thing is overextended and it's running into severe uh, overhead resistance. And what better place to play that overhead resistance than the gap? Look at it. It just came up today and just played that gap beautifully. I think almost to the number. The high on this candle I'm seeing is about 29,000. And the close on this candle I am seeing at 2892. So 28,920. I mean, that is just like, it just doesn't get any better than that, folks. And um, if you were looking to entertain some shorts, that was the spot to do it. Now, what about the long side opportunities? Well, honestly, like what I've been saying, and let's actually get a little bit smaller of a pen there. So this trend is still intact. I mean, obviously that's a nasty reversal. And if it continues... It's not good, but look, as long as it stays above or around this trend line, I think we're going to fill the next gap. And it's all going to depend really on what the NASDAQ and what the SPY is going to do. Um, and look, even if it goes back down, let's get rid of this drawing. Even if, if things get nasty for a while, make a bearish pattern, testing the 20 period moving average, the 50 and maybe even the 200 and the 100 at this point, this could still stay in somewhat of a bullish trend. And then look, we're back to it and we're going to fill that gap. So I'm not sold that this is over. Um, it certainly can be a, um, you know, a nasty couple of weeks, or it could just honestly tag this upper trend line and resume upwards. Keep in mind that you do have an, a gap right here that it might want to fill as well as a 200 and a 100 period moving average. So just things to keep in mind, guys, uh, regarding your positions and what side you are on. Because if you took a short here, perhaps those are going to be your targets. If you're looking for long opportunities, there are quite a few in here. So just wanted to go over that chart, guys. And let's go back into the Lazy Day Trader channel. We had quite a few setups today that hit and people got paid so let's go into it 
Okay, so here we are in the Lazy Day Trader channel. We have the track record right here. We have our morning meme and our morning timestamp. Good morning. Now, today we were really uh, just waiting on Jerome Powell at 2.30 p.m. and the notes that came out at 2 p.m. And I broke down really what is the case. So we had we had the morning rush typically. Today was actually extremely slow. Usually you have traders jockeying for position before the FOMC announcement, and then you'll get a snooze fest and wait and see mode at lunchtime. Obviously the finale, right? So we're going to get the finale where it looks like an EKG. So you have that EKG and you're going to see that when I pull back into the charts in a moment. But I want to point out something here, guys. Other than a, you know, a casino, this is not something that I want to be a part of. I know traders would like to be a part of it because it's volatility, but there's really no clear direction and they can do anything they want to. And I just do not want to be a part of it. So I try to treat this as a business. I try to make sure that I do that day in and day out and that I'm not treating this like a casino. So just a couple notes there, and I hope that was educational for everyone. Um, let's get into a couple of the SPY levels. So 397, if, if you wanted to do a long scalp, because it was very slow. So let's go into the chart. Now, I had called this out, and it got to the long scalp at about 10 o'clock. Now, it's eating time off the clock. This is not something I personally did, but it gave you the scalp to the penny 397 all the way back up, and it gave you seven handles or 70 cents on the SPY. And when I say handles, that's seven handles on the ES futures contract. So not something that I took, but again, I understand some traders want some more action, and I am giving you that. One of the trades that I want to call out, and what I did call out was NVDA NVIDIA. So this is how I'm going to set things up moving forward, guys. This is what it's going to look like. Um, you're going to get clear alerts, and that's the way I'm going to do things moving forward. Take a look at these numbers. Go into the channel, and then go take a look at the NVIDIA chart because I'm going to go into it right now, but you could certainly do that on your own. So 272.50, 273.70, and 275.40. I had called this out, let's see, at 10 a.m., now, by the time it got here, I did not want it because look at the EKG it created with Jerome Powell. But the point is, I said, any trader that is willing to do this during the FOMC, just know it is extremely high risk, but the numbers work. And I want to point this out that look at how perfectly they tagged off these levels. First, boom, give you the bite at the apple. It goes back up, boom, gives you another bite at the apple. It comes back up. Boom, does it again, and then goes up to the th first, the third number and gives you the whole pie and then some. I mean, look at that. That is 10 bucks, 10 bucks. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm not in this trade, but just something to show you guys that these numbers are very calculated and very thought out. And I'm not sharing anything with you guys that I would not take myself. So hopefully this is helpful to see. So at 10.30, I had called out, hey, SPY is at resistance here. Look what it did. It gave you, let's see, 3.98. It gave you a dollar and then some on this trade, which is 10 handles on the ES futures contract. So I understand that's quick. It's not something I'm updating in the track record, but it is action that traders can take and I'm calling out nonetheless. Um, there's really nothing else more than just me pointing out, hey, if you took that spy resistance level, look at this. Uh, you have your take one, your take one profit and your take two profit, and then as well, I just called out a bin. I the uh, Bitcoin swing short, I had called out in the live room. Which if you did that, you got paid already, and you should be taking profit on that uh, as we speak. Um, we had a couple of different extreme numbers, if they were really going to rip the market, and if they were really going to drop the market, we had those numbers. They just did not get to those numbers. But guys, thank you very much. It was a great day in the channel. It was a great day for the markets. Well, not a great day for the markets, but nonetheless, um, enjoy doing this with you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow on the charts. Thank you and have a great night.